As far as bonsai techniques are concerned, repotting is probably the most mispracticed technique in bonsai, second only to watering. And the interesting thing about the mispractice of repotting is that the entire strength and health of the tree is sourced from that root system being set up to establish a balance of water and oxygen. And one of the biggest mechanical actions of that repotting process is the insertion of the soil into the oxygen or air spaces that exist and integrating that soil to have contact with the roots of our tree to establish that balance of water and oxygen. Now one of the tools that we utilize and one of the reasons that repotting is mispracticed is because we don't necessarily understand the meaning or the function of the chopstick. And I want to really focus on the function of the chopstick and how we create a chopstick that's going to set you guys up for success. We have to understand what the function of the chopstick is and how it works in order to actually be creating a structure and a tool that's maximizing our efforts and doing the best thing possible for the tree, okay? So let's start first by understanding what is the goal of the chopstick, all right? <clears throat> when we talk about the chopstick, we are moving soil in a direction, okay? So we want to have intentional control over the movement of the soil. One of the biggest things about chopsticks that taper on all sides as a cylinder or if both ends taper to a point, right? What this gives us is it gives us movement of all of the particles on any surface of that chopstick. This doesn't necessarily give us control of the direction, okay? And number two, the purpose of the chopstick is to integrate soil into roots, and let's say into and between roots, to fill airspace with the least possible damage. Our goal when we start to create this system that we're going to be cultivating this tree in for the next two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 years is to generate a balance of water and oxygen that allows our tree to strike that ultimate level of health and thrive as a bonsai. In order to do that, we've got to have good root to soil contact. In order to get that contact, we've got to know we can move that soil in the directions we need to to occupy those spaces. And we've also got to be able to do that while doing as little damage as possible to the root system itself. And this is what creates the general concept over the tool we're going to be creating, which is the best possible chopstick you guys could ever make. And it's easy. Any of you can do it, and this will up your level of success, set the tree up for a much higher level of health, and really start to prepare that system of this mispractice technique of repotting to be a larger and larger part of your increased bonsai level, okay? So let's get into the shape of the chopstick that gives us the intentional direction of movement while doing the most limited amount of damage to the roots. So I always look at chopsticks almost like an aerodynamic structure like the tip of a bullet train. And actually the tip of the bullet train is the first thing that comes to mind when I look at it. Now, we've got this very hard, this is the exterior surface of the bamboo that we're utilizing. We've got this more soft, this is the interior surface. And this is more sculptable or more malleable to allow us to achieve this face. Now this angle here, whether we go super long or even longer, or if we go more shallow, has a direct impact on how we move that soil. Now we know, right, we want to be moving soil in a direction. And if we have our standard rendition of the chopstick, right, that we don't have necessarily any control. Because if I'm inserting this into a group of soil particles, okay, I'm going to be plunging that tapered on both sides tip into the soil particles. And these particles are going to move there. And these particles are going to move there. And then when I pull this out, these particles are going to move there, and these particles are going to move there, and we've accomplished nothing, right? Now, when we utilize a face of this nature, and we plunge this into particles, this flat face and that hard surface along the bottom of the bamboo is going to be holding particles from moving behind it. This angled face is going to be pushing particles in a direction perpendicular to it. 
And all of a sudden, we understand that we have control of the movement of the particles and where we push those inside of that root system where our hands are too coarse or can't fit and where oxygen spaces exist that are preventing us from striking that balance of water and oxygen. Okay? So when we start to see this, this shallowness or this steepness or this happy medium where we achieve both good movement while doing limited damage, limited movement while doing no damage, maximum movement while doing maximum damage, right? We have the option and ability to be able to cater, contour, and create that functionality in the chopstick, all right? So when we start to look at this, we need a side that holds, a side that moves, we need the hardness of that exterior so it doesn't change shape and we need the softness and malleability of that interior to give us the option to be delicate, functional, or even aggressive in terms of integrating those soil particles into the root system. Okay? Now let's look at the container dynamic and why this matters. When we insert a tree's root system into the container, typically we're very capable of getting soil across the bottom of the root system integrated into the roots. But a lot of times where that system starts to fail is when we've got enough soil across the bottom but this bottom portion of that root system is still open and filled with oxygen and no integration of the soil particles into the roots themselves. It's very, let me redraw this wall, it's very difficult for us to even be able to fathom getting soil into this and this is where this structure becomes imperative because now with this slanted face we can be pushing soil in a direction to fill that space and integrate that soil into that last component of the repotting process and the integration of soil at the very bottom of the container most out of reach to strike that balance. Okay? So as you guys are watching this process, pay special attention to the formation of that angle. Pay special attention to the preservation of the hard component of the chopstick. And really understand how you guys give yourself the tool to maximize this very fundamental technique that has such big repercussions in the success of your bonsai practice. So welcome to Mirai's Dungeon. This is where all the things that we never want you to see happen, uh, but for the spirit of making chopsticks and really getting down to the nitty gritty, uh, we're gonna invite you into <laughs> the depths of Mirai's belly. So in terms of creating the best chopstick to be utilized as bonsai, the quality of that chopstick starts with the initial material that you guys source. What we're looking for to give us the largest amount of flexibility and function in our chopstick is extremely long inner nodes from junction to junction in the bamboo where we have these nodes or rises in the thickness of the bamboo, okay? So the longer this inner node, the longer the chopstick we can make, the more flexible the chopstick we can make in terms of its function in the process of inserting soil into the roots and this length really becomes a significant focus, okay? The second thing that we really look for in terms of creating quality chopsticks is very thick walls and the thicker the wall of the bamboo, the more options you have for size that you can match and create customized to the tree or to the chopsticking situation that allows you to have the best function and result. Okay, So that inner node length and that wall thickness is a big part of the consideration and selection of material. We work really hard at Mirai to find quality bamboo and, and it is fairly slim pickings within the United States, um, but we have some awesome stuff right now to show you guys how to do this. So when we're sourcing bamboo, typically you guys are gonna be sourcing species of timber bamboo. And if you guys can't find it, we distribute timber bamboo at Bonsai Mirai for this specific purpose because this is such a significant part of our ethos of establishing that balance of water and oxygen in the root system. So if you're sourcing timber bamboo, you're gonna start out with a piece that has several internodes where we've got a thicker junction and and a nice, long, smooth um, length of inner node between the next junction. When we start to break this down to actually create chopsticks, we want to be 
cutting these so that we get one node that we're going to utilize as the handle of the chopstick and we want to be cutting this prior to the next node but utilizing as much length as possible. We would never want to include two inner nodes in one chopstick because that would mean that this node or this thicker part would be going through the root system and potentially causing damage. So you can see here, just to make it easily understandable, we've marked where we're going to be cutting these pieces apart to be able to create a nice thick handle and a nice smooth run that's going to be moving the soil through our root system. This next one here and here so we have that handle again and a nice smooth run to be moving that soil through our root system. We'll chop every single six, eight, ten foot extension of timber bamboo up into these single node junctions to be able to create the first step in the process of chopstick construction. <laughs> So uh, this is definitely not a woodworking instructional video and uh, I just want to put it out there, disclaimers, always wear eye protection, ear, mouth, right? Don't stick your hand in the saw, don't do anything stupid, okay? All right, so I'm going to cut right up against this node, right where I've got the marker marking the spot. I don't want to cut into the node because that's a very hard area, and I don't want to chew up any of the length of my section prior to the node. Right up against that's going to be good, so we just take about, say, half inch, three quarters of an inch, maybe uh, two, three centimeters prior to the node, and we're going to go ahead and cut it there. Now, when you cut bamboo, Bamboo is extremely hard, it's going to chew up your saw blade, so you should have a saw blade you're willing to sacrifice, but you also want to have a very firm grip with your offhand because it's going to want to rotate when you dig into it with the saw based on its round circumference. Okay, we may have to do one or two cuts to get through it, so I'll just drop my saw blade in to line that up. Okay. Again, going very slow. And now you guys can see that we've got that beautiful cut end. We've got our single node. And we've got this nice smooth section that's cut prior to the next node. This is all usable length for a chopstick creation. Okay, so now that we have our individual cylinders of bamboo um, cut apart from the larger system. We now need to come in and we need to divide this up and the way that we start this process to set ourselves up for every single chopstick that comes off of this node of bamboo is to be dividing this larger round 50-50 directly down the middle. If you have a bamboo uh, hatchet it's quite easy because the length of that blade is long and it allows you to get right through at that 50-50 mark we have a much smaller standard axe that's available in North America and so when we insert this into this round we need to be sure that we are calculating where that 50% sort of portion of the round exists and that we're hitting that in both points that we're going to be inserting this into and what this does is this keeps the walls if we split this right down the middle the walls of each of our chopsticks are going to be perfectly straight and far more comfortable for our hands to be utilizing okay so if we're using an axe or we're using a device that doesn't span the entire diameter of the bamboo round it's not a problem right but regardless of the cutting tool that we're using to do this, we want to have a solid surface, stone, concrete, or for this case, we're using a cinder block. And we want to make sure that we're not swinging the cutting device and trying to hit that at the 50% mark, right? So I'm going to set my tool on here, and I'm just going to pick the tool and the bamboo up together and drop them together. And the impact of that, um, that collision with the bamboo and the solid cinder block is what's going to drive the axe into the actual round of the bamboo. This is what allows me to control that 50% entry point of the round. Okay, so watch closely. So you see with one or two strong hits that, that the axe has flexed or spread this portion of the bamboo and it's split linearly all the way down that node. This is exactly what we want to have happen and we're going to utilize this to be able to create a 50-50 division. As you can see, that's a near, near perfect division. And as a result of that, the walls of these chopsticks are going to be extremely straight, very functional inside the soil, and also very easy on your hands to be utilizing 
to be inserting that soil into the oxygen spaces and integrating that soil with the roots. Okay, so now that the bamboo's opened up, you guys can see a few things about the structure of bamboo and, and the inner nodes that exist. So the inside of bamboo is extremely soft and very capable of wear. You can see at the inner node, there's actually a wall that stops anything from moving junction to junction inside of the core of the bamboo. And these are all things that ne we need to be aware of. Now the area that actually gives value to the bamboo is the hard exterior portion of the bamboo. And we really value this area because this area is what allows us to form a reference point for holding the soil and also gives us the longevity in the bamboo for it to not be whittled down into an uncontrollable shape as we're chopsticking in this very gritty aggregate um, soil of the containerized environment, okay? So in order to maximize this, I'm now thinking about how wide do I want that hardest part of my bamboo chopstick? Am I making a thin, slender chopstick for very fine root work or very narrow areas where the tree's root system may be close to the pot? Or am I making a wider chopstick for a larger tree, for areas where I have more space, or for areas that my clearance between the root system and the rest of the pot is very large? We can make any number of shapes, sizes, and customized chopsticks to be able to fit the environment and the, the necessities of that insertion of soil and integration into the roots. And so this system is something that you guys have total control over and can absolutely make exactly what you need. Now first things first, let's go ahead and remove this wall so that when we start splitting and dividing the chopsticks into the widths that we want, this isn't holding them to get together and impairing our um, division of the, the grain. Okay, so I'm just gonna come in with a standard root cutter, right? Nice flat tooth to tooth standard tool in the repotting process of bonsai. And I'm gonna remove this interior wall. It's very soft, it's not a very big deal to remove it. I'm not afraid to break it because this is not gonna play a functional role in the chopstick. We're just trying to get this out of the way, okay? Now you can see these grains here. This is what allows me when I start choosing that width, okay? And I use that, that nice cutting edge to split parallel with the grain of the chopstick. You can see how that splits along the grain of that outer harder layer of bamboo surface, okay? So I can just come down here and I can follow this crack, continuing to insert my tool and watch as I leverage the tool's cutting edge against the exterior hard point that's splitting away and it draws that crack all the way down that surface. This makes it extremely easy to create nice, smooth, straight lines of bamboo or straight runs that we can build beautiful chopsticks with. Okay, so we have all of our rough pieces of bamboo here, and we've gotten out the grinding wheel to be doing the shaping and reduction of the sharpest, hardest areas of the chopstick, so that it's both friendly for the roots as well as friendly for us as the user. In the repotting season, we spend a lot of time with these chopsticks in our hands, and it makes sense to make them as user-friendly as possible. Now, this device, whether you choose to use a grinding wheel or you choose to actually use a, actually use a sanding wheel, the mechanical advantage of using a wheel as opposed to trying to do this all by hand increases the rapidity of the process. I would highly recommend it, okay? Now, before we get started, uh, I just wanna kind of show a comparison of the rough to what we eventually are gonna be creating in terms of the refined chopstick so that you can kind of see the transition and the transformation and then I wanna show you how to get to that point. So we're really looking for that nice pointed tapering tip and a really smooth, uh, well-worked body of the chopstick to make it very easy to use, okay? So now that we have this rough piece of stock, and I'm gonna start out with a bigger, thicker piece so that I can better illustrate the point for you guys. We're gonna make three really distinct cuts at the tip of this to remove excess meat and start to set up the shape of the final tip or pointed portion of our chopstick that's going to be doing the moving and the movement of the soil uh, into those air spaces between the roots and integrating that system, okay? When beginning the removal of the bulk 
portion of the chopstick to start forming some of the angles and the faces that we're going to be utilizing. We first need to understand that we're always removing the meat and contouring the chopstick on the soft side or the interior portion of that bamboo um, node and circumference that we had. So this back side that's extremely hard, we're going to leave this alone. We're never going to cut it away. We're never going to be grinding on this or contouring this or removing this because this forms a very definitive reference surface area flat that holds the soil in place while this contoured face is going to be directing and moving the soil inside of the containerized system. So when I start to form that cutting face, I'm going to make one cut towards the center of that at an angle to create the beginning of a point. And just a nice angled cut trying to hit that 50% point. I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to make my second cut very similar, same angle, same concept, trying to hit that 50% point and create that initial sort of tip that we're, that, that we're going to be working into the soil. And my third cut, I'm going to be making a nice tapered cut down to the point of that hard end that we're leaving intact so that I create the face that's going to be moving that soil. And now you can see I've set up the faces that are going to be penetrating that soil and giving direction to all of that movement that we're going to be integrating into the root system. Now when we start to create thinner chopsticks that have a much more delicate function inside the container, and you can see how much more slender this one on the left is than the one on the right, it starts to change the way that we work with the chopstick. Because if we're going to create this nice delicate tip here, but we have this thickness here, all of a sudden we've got too much meat vertically in the chopstick, and that starts to impair our ability to be delicate and enter finer points in the root system. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to utilize my tool to actually take away the softer portion of that interior meat. Again, we always leave the exterior hard portion intact, and I'm going to split along this grain just the same way as we did when we were opening these away from that round. I'm going to split and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that meat from the interior, that soft stuff, to create a much finer, much more slender, workable portion of my chopstick. Once I've done that, I can come back to my standard one cut, two cuts, three cuts for contour, and I'm set up to start the grinding process. So again, I want to reiterate, there's any number of ways to manipulate these chopsticks to create length, to maximize thickness, to utilize the meat of the chopstick, or to reduce the meat of the chopstick, to customize its shape for any condition that we're going to be inserting soil into the containerized environment. This uh, is one of the most important things to understand and to create a multitude of chopsticks that give you the variety while you're in the repotting process, while you're in action, having that chopstick that fits that need right there immediately available, sharpened and ready to serve that purpose. Okay, so now that we've got a few of our backbones um, and rougher chopsticks made, we've got two larger ones and a thinner one here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to utilize the grinder to really refine the faces of the tip of the chopstick that's going to be moving the soil, as well as take the sharp edges off of the crude bamboo cuts from the root cutters so that I start to build that system that gives me a little bit more of a user friendly and functional shape to the chopstick. So when we're creating the shape of this, there's several things that we need to be aware of, but the, the fundamental thing we've got to be understanding of is this face is the most important face on this chopstick, okay? The angle of this face is what controls the movement of the soil into the root mass and gives us the ability to position the soil and push it in a direction. This back face supports, we know we don't touch that, it's the hardest part and it'll never change, but this angle is guiding our soil and it's giving the soil the ability to move. So if this angle is too steep, Right? For example, and I'm just going to pull this in again as reference, notice how short that angle is or how short that face is and how abrupt that face would be if you're trying to move soil in a delicate fashion around very delicate roots. So when we're starting to create that shape, we can elongate that to be able to soften that movement through the root system and around the roots. Now if we go too far, all of a sudden we lose that directional push of the soil, so we're always striking that happy medium and that balance between too shallow, too uh, open, get, getting that perfect, perfect uh, angle to be able to directionally push while being delicate. Okay? The other thing to be aware of is this nice smooth transition to a very sharp point. Now a lot of times people think that you can have a blunt end on a chopstick and that it's better because it's not going to be as sharp or dangerous. Quite the opposite. That sharp point and this movement to that sharp point is what allows you to hit roots and create a nice clean 
wound on the root that'll heal and that'll reproduce roots from that point of injury. The more blunt and the shorter that the length of that is, we start to crush roots and we start to break roots and those are roots that have rot that enter or atrophy and don't produce a new fine root system around those pieces of damage. So a nice clean angle that moves soil is not too shallow, not too open, and a nice sharp point at the tip of this so that we create nice clean pieces of damage if we do hit roots or we're able to move through the root system very smoothly and with as little damage as possible. And we want to focus particular attention on this point at the node end of the bamboo chopstick because this is where our hand is going to be holding. So we're going to take all of these corners off, we're going to grind down this node, we're still going to leave it there because it forms an actual very comfortable handle for our thumb to be resting in and our hand to be gripping in terms of action of the chopstick. But we need to make sure that this doesn't create blisters or wear down our hand in the use process. So the final step, now that we've gone through all of the process of creating a really functional chopstick, is just to put that last finishing touch on to make it extra smooth, remove any splinters. If you've ever had a bamboo sp splinter, you'll know why we do this step. And take away any of these inconsistencies, dense chips, and sharper areas that could potentially cause damage to our hand or to the roots. So I'm just gonna take, and I typically use 80, 100 grit. It doesn't matter the grit um, of the sandpaper as long as it's not too fine. So too 200 grit, 220, it's not going to do near the job that you need it to quick enough. 100 grit sandpaper and I basically just use it to kind of sand off all of the splinters and you can kind of see the splinters falling off as I'm doing it. If there's anything that's not coming off, I'll come back in and just remove it, kind of pull it off and then continue to smooth out that section. Now one thing I want to continually draw your guys' attention to is I'm not sanding the back hard side of this. I'm leaving that extremely flat and intact. Again, this is the reference plane or surface that holds the soil while this surface is moving the soil and that dynamic is exactly what we're trying to accomplish so always be aware of that and preserving that flat face okay, and then I'm going to come back up here and I'm just going to kind of fold this and just run it over the sharp parts or any of these things that weren't we weren't able to get off nice little touch up okay, and the last place I want to focus on is this handle make sure that this handle is nice and smooth at the end of the day, you have a really beautiful, very functional instrument that is going to give you the highest possible percentage of opportunity to eliminate those air spaces, integrate that soil into the root system, and give yourself the opportunity to strike that balance of water and oxygen that maximizes your tree's health.